So I just tip them back and I'm just looking for the number of seams that these bees are filling. So I'm looking here, one, two, three, four. So there's about three onto four frames of bees covered here at the bottom. So I count this as a four framer. These guys I'm just gonna leave alone. No tag on them. Okay, now these guys, I'm sure if you guys can see this. I'm gonna call this an eight framer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could call any size here. So these guys I'm anticipating have a fairly large brood nest inside. Um, that's my assumption. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mark them with a blue tag. This tells me that later in May, when we start adding space, that these guys will get a full box on top to allow that queen to grow into two boxes. guys are one two three four maybe five and pissed because I dropped them so I'll just leave them without a tag so here's like a eight frame anyways we're a great big nice cluster so I'm anticipating these guys have a lot of brood inside Mark them with a the blue tag. Here's a box of bees. So these guys will need a second box in a couple of weeks uh, after we get that first hatch through and then we get on to that second round of brood where they start to grow that colony. These guys are going to need space right away. So uh, yeah, these guys are brilliant. Mark them with the blue. Like another big one. At least eight or nine frame. Very big hive. It's got some weight to it, so that's good. Mark the blue. box of bees. So this is basically what I'm doing. A lot of bent over work, you know, hoisting hives, throwing in tacks. I'm just trying to, you know, get a feel on the size of my apiary. Um, how much equipment do I need to add a seconds? You know, how many splits are we going to be making up? So I gotta know those numbers just so I can make better planning. I gotta be able to identify all the small and the weak hives. Box of bees. I've gotta be able to identify the small and the weak so we can put some attention towards them. Either fix them up or boost them or do something with them. Oh boy, another box of these. I'm getting a good row here. So this says 2015. I'm going to mark this one to come back later for uh, 
the breeder assessment. That's very positive. It doesn't mean that Queen's been around since 2015, but it means this colony's been going since then. And uh, that's what I want to promote. I want to promote, you know, just continue perpetuation of the colony and its development. So these guys have been going since 2015. That's really positive. Another box of bees. These guys look great. So these two, these guys have been going since 2015 also. Mark these guys, the blue tag, and I'm also going to send him through my breeder assessment. After we get caught up with their work, uh, as we're selecting our breeder, qu breeder queens, and we'll check all the flagged hives. Uh, I'll flag a hive that I like, and we'll dig down into them, and we'll look for certain characteristics of the queen. And then as we continue to make our rounds, if all of a sudden we see an unfavorable characteristic, uh, we'll pull that pin out. So anyways, that's it's a very basic way of uh, choosing breeder and queens and, and selecting the genetics. For the most part, is basically you identify the characteristics you want, you pin them, and as you're going through, like you pin them all, all the good ones that you like, and as you go through and you see stuff that you don't like out of that queen, you pull that pin out. And eventually you end up with a few at the end, which should, which should, uh, hold all the characteristics you're looking for and those are the ones you should be breeding for to be able to propagate your apiary and just advance it till the next year. Okay, so this one I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to leave them alone. two, three, four. So these guys probably will need a boost later on, but we'll just leave them for now. And I think you probably get the point. So this is what I'll be doing through the next 1200 hives. Uh, a lot of stoop labor bent over. I never know what I'm going to see. Sometimes I see those box of bees. Sometimes I find smaller ones and those are the ones that we had to flag to be able to direct attention towards and uh yeah and it's been fairly encouraging so far working through the apiary uh, just doing some assessments i'm seeing a lot of potential and seeing a lot of i'm seeing hives bigger than i anticipated especially last fall you know all my fussing i did last fall but these hives they boy they sure look a lot different than i thought they would i think this all follows through with, uh, with our attention we put towards our queens. Especially that we're breeding our own stock now. We're incorporating uh, the genetics that are favorable to our area, our condition, our management style. So we're promoting everything that it takes to be able to survive on this farm. So I think, I don't know, you know, I might be seeing that in a roundabout way. We might be uh, just expressing the brilliance which uh, naturally would be brilliant on this farm <laughs> if that makes any sense anyways i better get back to work and enjoy these sheltered yards in this extremely windy day